we're young, we have an amazing, positive outlook about how great life is going to be. But somewhere along the line, we forget to dream and end up settling. Join Up Dots features amazing people who refuse to give up and chose to go after their dreams. This is your blueprint for greatness. So here's your host, live from the back of his garden in the UK, David Ralph. Yes. Hello there, everybody, and welcome to Join Up Dots. This is David Ralph. This is episode 552. I've got a lovely lady on the other end, and life is good. Life is good in Join Up Dots land, unless you live in the United Kingdom, and the weather is rubbish at the moment. I don't know what's happening to it, but I speak to loads of people, and the first thing I say to them is, you know, what's the weather like there? And literally every single person says, it's lovely. I'm walking around in shorts. I've got flip-flops on. Everything is perfect. What's happening? in the United Kingdom I don't know I don't know but anyway today's joy is is personally within me I feel a joy not just for myself but also for the guest and I'll give you a clue it's her name as well and she is a lady who's had an amazing journey of self-discovery and fulfillment now when she was a small girl it's she, she was in a dark place. There's no getting away from it. And after a failed suicide attempt, she realised that she needed serious help. Feeling rejected and confused about being given up and being adopted, she decided to do self-therapy on herself as a 16-year-old girl. And by doing the unorthodox shock method of becoming a model, she kind of started to move forward onto her path. As she says, it was a very painful process going for audition after audition alone as a timid and self-conscious teenager however I was determined to redeem my lost self and force myself to keep at it and that she did and that spirit of self-improvement has carried her through her life and now with her own self-named company helping others to find their place on earth and taking that one step further she is also the fire starter of for our children Singapore an initiative set up to raise funds to build schools in third world countries helping children gain a better start in life and she was given herself and just being a good, nice person. Now, it appears that her dots have well and truly joined up and placed her in a sweet spot, the place that she was born to flourish in. So did that little girl who grew up into an empowered woman ever truly believe that she could banish the darkness and live in a world of light and positivity? And when did the realisation of it was up to her to take control and claim her destiny start to appear in front of her? Well, let's find out as we bring onto the show to start joining up dots with the one and only Joy Leng. So how are you today, Joy? I'm fabulous. How are you, David? I'm always good. I'm always good in the world of Join Up Dots. Join Up Dots is a happy place to be. And I feel like I'm in the centre of it. I feel like the world is, you know, everyone is nice to each other. Is that the way that you feel on, on a daily basis? Yes, I do. Not in the past, but now definitely so. So have you always had that? Because obviously in the introduction, we were talking about that you've been in a sort of very dark place and we're not going to mm. dwell on that too much. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. is it something that mentally you've had to force yourself to believe or is it always in you? Is it kind of your natural spirit that the world is a good place? Um, well, I, I'm not sure about that but yes in the beginning it was a lot of work it, it it didn't feel very natural you know like like i think some people would share my experience with for example affirmation you're like i i don't i think i'm lying but then like you have to keep saying it and then um if you persist the reality is after a while if you you sit with it it feels quite comfortable and then after a while you actually start to think like hey you know what i actually kind of believe it and then the next thing you know it's like yeah this is this is my version of the web this is the lens that i wear and uh, i'm very comfortable with it so um sometimes it is as simple as that the willingness to uh, put down the lens that is not working and put on a lens that is more resourceful that gives you more joy so, so is it kind of mental lies? Somebody said this to me the other day. They said, you know, I feel like I'm mentally lying to myself every morning. I'm saying, I'm going to achieve great stuff. I'm going to be doing this. I'm going to be doing that. And after a while, they naturally believe it. But is it at the beginning, are you kind of lying to yourself? Is, is it just that you're putting the right fuel in your body mentally to, to start the engine to get going? I think I would uh, put it as... Um strategy as in like okay belief is whatever that you perceive to be real if you think about it um whatever you insist is real your belief could be different from someone else and you have all the evidence in the world to prove that your belief is real and hers is not 
but so does she. She also has evidence to prove that her belief is real and not yours. So where do we go from there? So I think if that's the way the world works, then why not just adopt beliefs that is resourceful, that is empowering, that uh, propel you to the goals that you want? It's really as simple as that. So I don't see it as lying then. I'm just seeing it as um, I have a certain destination and I'm trying to find out which uh, route I should take, which is the most efficient route. Uh, why should I take the longer route when there is a faster route? Oh, I agree, I agree with this totally. I always say it's like being water. Water generally will find the, the shortest route to the sea. And we've Ooh. just got to mm. find that route. And more often mm-hmm. than not, we find we're banging up against something where literally we should just slip to the side and go around it. Um, I'm a great believer in that. Mm. Is, is life? Do you think that life should be easy? Because I, I do, Joy. I think that I spent many, many years banging up against things where now I'd look back on it and go, hang on, this is just too hard. I, sh- I shouldn't just be hitting myself against a brick wall. I should be looking for a door to the side and actually just walk through mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I agree with you, but like like you, I spent um, a big part of my life just thinking that life is meant to be difficult. But I think it's also the culture that we live in. We have all this like, um, um, you know, racks to reach your stories or, you know, the, the way my parents grow up. My my, my mom is a, a, a serial saver. She would save every <laughs> cent, every penny. So I, I grew up learning all this. You absorb whatever's going on, what people say and the behaviors around you. And then you take that as your worldview, isn't it? You take that as the belief that must be real because people around me behave like that. Uh, how many of us actually, when we grow up, we take one step back and then, hey, wait a minute, why am I behaving like that? Because I believe in this, okay? But is that real? You know, like what evidence do I have? And I think a lot of people don't do that. You take one step back and examine the beliefs that you 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 take for granted, right? But um, you can't live your whole life like that. That's a high price to pay, don't you think? Oh, I do. I absolutely do. And I, I must admit, I come from your mum's kind of mentality. <laughs> I, I, I am a serial saver. I like nothing more than counting money and seeing bank <laughs> accounts go up. And it took me it took me a long time. Now, in Join Up Dots, literally every bit of money I get, I will look at investing it back into the business. And oh. I, I basically will take my survival to pay for the bills, you know, the things that you need to do. I will take that out and I will be spending money on website designers and sort of hosting. And I, I just put it back into the business. But it's not easy because I am like... Like your mum. Your mum is a serial saver, but I would say to you, Mrs. Leng, that the <laughs> quickest way to expand in your life is actually to invest in yourself. Would you say, Joy? Oh, I'm a big believer in that. That's why um, um, I'm someone that um, my friends will uh, describe me as a cost junkie. I'm always going for seminars and lectures. I'm just addicted to it. It's just so exciting every time you learn something new. And then you're like, oh, my God, you know, I, I, I didn't know it's like this. Oh, what can I do with this? How can I apply it? To me, it's like it's, it's like a game. And I enjoy the game. It's like a never-ending game. There's always new things that you don't know that you can discover. And then you you try to make value out of it. What is your interpretation of this new knowledge that you have? Where are you going to run with it? It's fun. Oh, I, I, I think so. But I do think that you can become, you know, you, you can take too many courses and in the end you Mm -hmm. can't see the wood for the trees i do think there comes a time Mm -hmm. that you've just got to go no for a while i'm not going to do any of that i'm just going to work on myself for example this week Mm -hmm. i've had an absolute nightmare with my sound on my computer where from the very beginning of the show i've had it all set up and everything's good and I've just started to think to myself, oh, I think I can make the sound even better. And people say to me, it's very good sound on this podcast, mm. but I want to make it perfect. And so I fiddled around with my computer and changed some settings that I shouldn't have done and didn't know what I'd changed. So basically, I was three days ago having no sound, the microphone wouldn't work or anything. And so all I had to do was basically get into it and try to work out now as it is i found out more in this week because i've actually taken furious action to try to find it than anything i would have got in a course Mm -hmm. because i just dived in to solve my issue and now i can see ways that i can improve my sound massively so can you can you do too many courses is it the case that study actually stops you from taking the action that actually pushes you forward 
I, I think that's definitely possible. You kind of need to balance it out. Uh, I, I guess a good way would be to take a course and then work on what you've learned and then how you're going to apply it before you work on another one. I mean, having said that, it's all very situational, isn't it? If you have two courses that someone somewhat relate to each other or they are complementary, then I guess it's okay to have these two courses together. Otherwise, um, I think, yes, one at a time, you, you need to kind of master what you've learned to a certain degree. No point learning all the knowledge in the world and then what you start in your head and then you walk around with it in your head then what the, you don't serve the world with that thing in your head what does it come out it's about the output it's not about the input the input is about the output if you know what i'm saying Oh, I, I know exactly what you're saying. Yeah, absolutely. It, is, it, it all comes down to action at the end, doesn't it? That's the mm-hmm. thing. Once you mm-hmm. take responsibility for your own life and you stop thinking mm-hmm. that somebody else is going to give you the magic key. And in, in corporate land, you see that all the time. I was that. Ah, if I work really hard here and that person dies, I'll get his job. That's what I want. And you, you realise that that person's never going to die, so you're never going to get the job. <laughs> but uh, you, you still sort of cling to the fact that that if this happens and that happens it's going to magically line up somehow but in entrepreneurial world every single day the action that you take actually does have something more often than not at the end of the day i'll go to bed thinking okay i may not have achieved everything i wanted but i think mm. I've, I've taken a step forward because i've i've had my own responsibility now in your life you you've done that you know go, going back to the sort of early days You are a very attractive lady. There's no getting away from that. And I'll be honest, Joy, I have spent many happy hours looking at your website of you you dancing. And there there are some images that are now going to be my screensaver. I'm going to have those on my computer. And um, I, I leave it. It's not going to go into stalking mode, but they, they were they were very pleasurable to look at. Now, the interesting thing for me was the fact that as in the introduction, you said it was very painful going for auditions after auditions alone because you was timid. Why did you do that? Why did you take that route? Because that's the scary route. I can see that. That is like going on to sort of X Factor or whatever if you can't sing. If you are sort of shy putting yourself out there as a model as a dancer where people will be looking at you and critiquing you for your appearance Mm -hmm. or the way you move why did you do that you know david for the life of me until today i have no idea why (laughs) why did i do that and how did a young girl you know would figure a solution like that um all by herself and persist in 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 it when it's not fun every time it's actually torturous i have no idea but i'm just so grateful and i'm so thankful i did that because that started my whole journey it's almost like my life truly began when i took that incredible step which i guess i will never understand why i just think that maybe it's just um my natural instinct coming out and you know like there was enough pain as well that I kind of wanted to put a stop to it. The pain was bad enough that I was, I guess, willing to go through whatever discomfort and another kind of pain to, you know, to just have a fresh start in life and to just stop looking at the floor when I walk. It's fascinating, isn't it, when you look back on your life? I know we were talking just before we pressed recording where you were saying to me about the, uh, you know, why did you do the show why did you decide on the Steve Jobs speech and I said to you I've got no idea I I can't remember ever having that thought in my head it was just something that just sort of occurred around me and I find that more often than not when you do reflect and you join up your dots like we do in this show more often than not I struggle to remember how I got here and over the period of doing the show certain times I've been talking to guests and then I think ah yes I'd forgotten I'd done that it all sort of comes to T- together the, the the journey becomes sort of real to you somehow but you just can't see it can you you look back and it's like you you blank that bit of your life out somehow i i'm completely with you david like um there's some parts of my life it's just a blur it's it's just fuzzy i don't remember much and uh, what i've learned from myself is that um we all have these moments of genius and we have that in us it's like it we, we have that greatness where we're born with it so when it happens don't question it just just go with it and when you look back then you'll be like uh-huh that's why i did that but in that moment if it just is obsessed with 
the why and trying to rationalize what you're doing, um, then you're destroying the magic. You should just, I know in my heart, there's this voice telling me I need to do this, then just go. It doesn't matter if you don't understand it right now. It's a, it's joining the dots, isn't it? You would be able to join the dots later. Now, it's just adding the dots. You're just creating new dots. You can join it later. You know, First thing first, create the dots. It is strange, though, that you, you look at yourself and you you query and you question and you doubt yourself but mm-hmm. say, say in relationships man goes into a bar sees a lady or the other way around or two men go into bars or whatever whatever your sort of your, your your choice is and you go in there and you see someone and you think wow that person's amazing i need to get to know them you don't question hang on why am i feeling this way why 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 do i want to get to know that person it's like magic occurs but in your own life there are there, there is magic all the way through and there's things that you can just do naturally easily but we kind of dismiss those don't we we don't look at those and go ah oh, this is this is where i should be moving towards this is my ideal date in my own life this is what i need to be doing every single day it's, it's bizarre isn't it in relationships we just sort of ignore it and go for it we like that person and away we go but in our own life we we don't ever look at it as in the same way somehow do you see what i'm saying mm-hmm. i think uh, uh, one reason could be we uh we don't think that we are enough. We don't think that we're good enough. So whatever we say to ourselves, we're like, are you sure? You know, <laughs> and we say, we say it all the time. We probably say it many times in a day if you think about it. You, we always doubt. We doubt ourselves. But then if our friend comes along and say, yeah, do that. Oh, really? Okay, then, you know, you don't even think about it. You just do it. But then when you yourself ask, okay, let's do this. Really? You sure? <laughs> And I think we do that all the time. So I think it's just, you know, if you have that, if you examine your own life and you're like, yeah, you know, I, I realize I have episodes of that, then question yourself, what, what, what is that belief, that trigger that is prompting all this behavior? Is that belief serving you? You know, if it's not, replace it. Then we- your behavior will change. Absolutely. We, we've got a, a coaching group, which I'm going to relaunch again. I've been testing it for a couple of years. It's a very small group, but we're so successful in there, building businesses and getting people to connect with them, their real side. And it's made me realize through doing this online coaching that the real beauty of building a business is not connecting with customers. Now, at the beginning, I would have said, what you need to do, you need to find your customers and then you need to sell them a product. End of story. That's how to build a business. Now I realize through doing it that you actually need to connect with yourself and you need to actually believe that you've got the value to provide to the world. You need to believe in yourself. It's that in a connection which actually builds the route to your success would you agree with that joy oh i completely agree i uh, recently i was coaching um um a female client and she she's uh she does energy healing and she's seeing slow pro- progress for her clients and after coaching i've been coaching her for a few months she's like telling me like she's so surprised at the speed that um she's seeing perform the results for her clients and that's because i see her grow she's like um, blossoming in front of me she's now very confident she don't look at me like um in doubt when i ask a question like oh i'm answering like that um is that okay you think you think it's true but now she's telling me with you know and she's looking at me straight and i and giving me the answer so i see this shift in her and it's alongside with the results that she's telling me that she's surprised she's getting but then she's at a point now she realized oh it's because i am more confident of myself now i'm more authentic to myself and i hear myself and i trust my instinct and i'm therefore i'm getting all these results she's joining her own thoughts so I'm totally with you. It it applies to all of us. I think I think people like to um, connect with people who are authentic to their their real self, right? Because you feel comfortable. This person is comfortable in their own skin. So if you talk to them, you know you're really talking to them. You're not talking to this persona. You're not talking to this mask. But you're talking to someone who's willing to you know show up, willing to tell the world this is me. And you know um, if if I connect with you. If you can connect with who I am, then come to me. So I think that you can attract your customer. It's just like a natural universal energy, I think. 
I, I think so as well, and which is why sort of webinars and stuff are so important. Webinars are really you getting out there and showing people, you know, yourself and that you move around and they can see you physically, they can hear you and you, you get a feeling, don't you? Once again, it comes back to the yeah. kind of that dating yeah. aspect. Hiding behind a website is not as powerful as actually getting out there. Now, when I started this, it was very much me talking into the microphone and blasting it out into the world. Now I do far more getting out there and doing live courses. And a lot of the stuff I do is free, but I enjoy doing it. And I connect with the audience and we're we're building sort of remarkable stuff. And when you're doing it, Joy, and you're, I'm sure you're going to agree with this, more often than not, you, you're talking on a subject and it's almost like you don't know the answers yourself but as you're talking you're thinking oh blimey this is true this this is this, I, I'm, I'm actually teaching myself something here I, I didn't quite realize that I knew this answer until I start actually putting myself out there it's that ability once more to actually step to the fore open your mouth and connect actually teaches you stuff as well which pushes you forward to the next stage I totally agree on that. I um, for my coaching, I focus a lot on um, authenticity and self compassion because that's what I felt I needed to work on. And by by uh, focusing my business in that direction, means that I need to read up, I need to examine it, I need to tear the concept into its small components. What does it mean? And then when I have conversation with my clients, and you know, I see a mirror image and I learn from it. So I think, uh, like they say, you know, you teach what you most need to learn, and that's pretty much what I'm doing in my work. And you love it every day, don't you? I can hear well, that you I do. love. I do, I do. I I think. Um, Life is such an amazing journey and we are so complex and we have, you know, like uh, we have all this mass, we have all this self-doubts and we might be different because of nationality or gender or age, whatever you think, but we are more alike than you think. We all have the same fears at the end of the day. Nobody wants to be rejected. That's why we're hiding. That's why not everyone has the kind of courage like you, David, to do a podcast or do a webinar. Everyone's hiding behind website and, you know, because behind a website, I can say whatever I want. I can be any persona I want, but to show up, show my face and be live, oh, you know, that's kind of creepy for some people. Oh, I love it. I do love it. This, I wake up on a Thursday morning and it's my join up dots day. So I do about five or six shows back to back. You're very early because you're in Singapore at the moment. So the sort of the time zones work very well for us. And um, if I could have a whole show based with Singapore people, it'd be brilliant. I could finish by lunchtime and then have, <laughs> have the rest of the day. But I go towards America and obviously they're behind me in the time zone. So it goes longer and longer. But on a Thursday, I literally cannot wait to get going. And the whole day just flies through. And at the end of it, I'm, I am exhausted because sort of talking on this sort of intensity for the whole day is kind of draining. Mm. But, oh, God, I love it, Joy. I love it. And that's what I want to get out to the world, that if you're waking up every single day with that feeling of, oh, God, another five minutes in bed, it's such a big indication that you're on the wrong path. Now, I'm going to tell you a story, Joy. This is an interesting one which happened during the week. But I connected with a lovely lady in our group called Megan. She's part of the Dream Starters Academy group. And we mm -hmm. were talking on Skype the other day. And she wants to become a digital marketer. Well, she is a digital marketer, but she wants to create her own business and go around the world traveling. And it's one of those brilliant things that she can actually take it with her. She doesn't have to go to an office. Now, after talking to myself for about an hour, she said to me, I felt so inspired and motivated that that I tackled a task that my boss thought would take me sort of days to do because I didn't really understand it. But because I was so sort of on fire, I just dove into it and I, I bashed it out of the park. And it gave her so much confidence. And what I was saying to her is she discovered flow. She discovered that part of her life that she was so engaged with the process that it just become easier and easier until she looks at it and thinks, wow, I can't believe I did that. And that is what we need to do in life, isn't it? We need to get to that mm -hmm. point where things just kind of flow easily and we love it and we lose hours. It's like watching a movie that you love and then suddenly two hours have passed and you don't even realise that anyone's sitting next to you in the cinema. You're just absolutely in that 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 moment, in, in the zone, as they say, in sportsmen. Mm -hmm. How often in your life are you like Megan, 
that you actually go, wow, that, that was so enjoyable. I didn't think I could do it at the beginning, but bang, it, it's done. I think the first time in my life I experienced that was when I fell in love with dancing. And having said that, I hated it when I first started because I really, really messed up my first dance performance. There was like five choreographed pieces and I was a last minute stand in. So I could not remember a thing, David, not a thing. <laughs> I was like, I didn't know what to do. And um, because I was the, the stand in, so they kind of put me in the middle. So if I make a mistake, you know, that hopefully people don't notice. I'm telling you, you have to be blind not to know that the girl in the middle is absolutely clueless. <laughs> Just standing there, feeling her, 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 her arms and hands because I had stage fright and it's my first show. Come on, like choreographed dance. Are you kidding? Five choreographed dance. I couldn't. So I was just standing in for the sake that I think my boss wouldn't have a bad time if you, if you asked me. To. I was like, what, 17, 18? So I really hated it. And I was like, my self-esteem, whatever that I managed to you know, build up was like, back on the floor so I was so mad I decided that I'm going to be the best dancer that I could possibly be and I went for a serial like dance lesson from all the different schools in Singapore whatever classes they are famous for and then somehow along the way I actually fell in love with dancing and then um, and then when I'm dancing I, I'm in that state that flow state that you mentioned David in the zone when I'm dancing I feel safe I'm like in my own space in this bliss state um Nothing can hurt me. Nothing can harm me. I'm not in pain when I'm dancing. I'm in bliss. I found joy, like literally. So that was my first experience of being in the zone and it became very addictive. Well, at least addictive enough that I actually started my pole dancing studio in Singapore. So um, it was such a journey. Well, let's play some words that really emphasize that. These were said a couple of years ago by Jim Carrey. We're going to hear him again. Here he is. My father could have been a great comedian, but he didn't believe that that was possible for him. And so he made a conservative choice. Instead, he got a safe job as an accountant. And when I was 12 years old, he was let go from that safe job. And our family had to do whatever we could to survive. I learned many great lessons from my father, not the least of which was that you can fail at what you don't want. So you might as well take a chance on doing what you love. Now, that is what you've been doing through your whole life, isn't it? The fact that you started becoming a model, you started becoming a dancer, you took a chance on doing something that you loved. It's, it's very brave to do that, isn't it? But once it hits, you realise that actually the, the cowardice is holding yourself back, isn't it? Mm -hmm. um, I think what is safe, you know, it's a myth, it's an illusion, there's no such thing as safe. What, what exactly does safe mean? So I, I think I have nothing to lose. The reality is if you go out there, you pursue your passion, what do you have to lose? You have to follow your heart. What, what is that song in your heart? You have to sing it. You have to dance it because you have to come alive. When you come alive, people can connect with you. And then before you know it, it's like the law of attraction. And then um, I'm a true believer that if you go out there, you put yourself out there and you follow your heart. And of course, you have to work hard on it. Um, things uh, is not going to just magically appear just because you declare it. After declaring, you have to put a focus and decisive action on it. Then you're just going to attract things. You're just going to um, be alert to opportunities. People are going to come to you. You're going to stand in for someone. Things will just happen. We have so many of such stories so many times, right? But you have to first take that leap of faith. You have to plunge into the dark, knowing that it will not be dark forever. But you have to take the first plunge. I like that idea of having a song in your heart. When you were saying that, I think there's two songs that I would have in my heart. The first one would be, don't stop me now. I'm having such a good time. I'm having a ball. I think that is that is some sort of my anthem, really. And I think the other one is My Way by Frank Sinatra. I did it my way. Because it is. It's just, if you don't follow the path and you just go for what's in your heart, in a way, you can't be wrong, can you? You can't, you, mm -hmm. you can't stumble. And I think that the problem is what most people do, they try to follow other people's paths and they look mm -hmm. at what other people are doing where I just like to do it my own way. And I like to do things, you know, just because it feels right in my, in my gut. And I think the gut is a big indicator, isn't it, of where we should be going in life. 
For sure. Um, yeah, God, you know, instinct, I think whatever you call it, it's just this voice that will whisper to you, but you have to kind of um, quiet down and, you know, shut down the noise. There's always so much noise uh, around us, other people's opinion, what the news is saying, what the, you know, media is saying, but you have to kind of find a way to shut it, block it and go inside, go within and hear what is that voice saying. It's always whispering, it's not loud. So you have to find a way to quiet down and calm yourself down and listen. It's always there. It's just that it's whispering, so you have to listen carefully. But, you know, um, it is a part of who you are. It's like that's your seed of greatest talking to you or rather whispering to you. You have to listen. I've got some good words on that as well. You're bringing them all out today. This is the uh, – she's Oprah. We've, we've got to listen to Oprah. Here she is. The way through the challenge is to get still – and ask yourself, what is the next right move? Not think about, oh, I got all of this stuff. What is the next right move? And then from that space, make the next right move and the next right move. And not to be overwhelmed by it because you know your life is bigger than that one moment. You know you're not defined by what somebody says is a failure for you because failure is just there to point you in a different direction. Now, I find those words so comforting because I know in entrepreneurial world, people will look at you at what you've achieved and they will go, oh, you're so successful. You've got this, you've got that. Everything's great in your life. But I, in my head, look at what I need to do because my vision is bigger than what the world can see at the moment. And so I look at it and think, oh, I need to do this and I need to do that. And I do sometimes deal with that overwhelm. Oh, God, I've got so much to do. I've got to, you know, reinvent the, the website and I've got to do this landing page and I've got to do this coaching and I've got this. But just do the next right thing and more often than not you know what that is don't you joy mm-hmm. uh yeah i think we all get overwhelmed every day the to-do list is so long and the reality is we're not even realistic if you would admit it about our to-do list it is not realistic you can't finish in 24 hours right given that you need time for your relationship and time for other things time to rest so I think it's just to focus and maybe pick the top three for the day. Focus, make sure the top three gets done. The rest, you know, do your best. If you can't, it's okay. Whether you finish it or not, guess what? It is a great day, isn't it? And tomorrow is another great day. You can finish the list or you can um, re-evaluate your list. Maybe some of the things are not really that important and, you know, maybe you should delegate it or whatever. So I think it's important to calm down, time out and focus on, the moment now as well and not just get so absorbed with the future while well, the future is great but what you have is now and the only moment you have is now and now is the present so what was your sort of life as a little girl like um where, where did you actually grow up because i know we sort of connected the other day and you said i was in new york and you were just coming back to singapore so you obviously travel around a lot um what was it like as a, a very small girl um as a young child, I'm basically mostly in Singapore, and even if I travel, it would just be in uh, nearby countries, I think, uh, like Thailand and uh, Malaysia, that's all. I don't really travel that much when I was a child. I went to Singapore a couple of times. I have never sweated as much as I did in Singapore. It was literally dripping off me. How, how, uh-huh. do you, how do you put up with that? Every morning you wake up and you think almost, oh, I don't want to go outside because I'm in air conditioning here. As soon as you step outside, it's like a waterfall. Uh, trust me, I I still don't get used to it every day. I'm, I just got back today and I'm like, what? Here we go again. You know, it's just, it's impossible, the, the weather here. So I try to hide indoors, you know, so I, because you can shower, walk out the door, by the time you walk out of, the front door, you're already sweating. And yeah. then all you want to do is go back and take another shower. <laughs> you haven't even gone out and do whatever you're supposed to do. So the weather in Singapore is impossible. But if you put the weather one side, everything else is great. And and what what is it about your life that really makes you connect with Singapore? Because you've got a business now that is global. You, you're, you're through online. You can travel. Why are you staying there and not going to, you know, wherever you can? Um, frankly, the idea is very appealing because um, I 
don't really consider myself your typical conventional Singaporean girl. But having said that, I am born here. I am breed here. My my family is here. At the end of the day, this is where my heart is. Um, so I think um, I would I like to travel and you know move around because I think it is such a big world. And traveling helps me not to be small minded. To know that there's so many different kinds of people and there's just different cultures, different ways of doing things, different perspective. And I like that a lot. And I like that constant reminder. So I kind of like to strike a balance. But at the end of the day, I am coming home and. Singapore is my home. I like the idea of actually taking join up dots wherever. Now, I've got some young kids and they're going through school at the moment. So uh, people say to me, I'll take them out of school and travel the world with them. But I kind of like them to have stability and their friends around Mm -hmm. them. And so I'm very much that once they move through school, then join up dots is going to travel the world but i've got this kind of little image joy which is a bit weird i've got a recording studio and it's all very set up i like the idea of creating the same room in different places around the world so i would like to have like maybe three properties around the world that i could go to but when i go into my recording studio it looks exactly the same a little bit weird really i don't know why i want that but it gives me that kind of a stability of of what i'm achieving and what i want to achieve that it seems the same. Is that kind of mad or can you sort of understand that? Oh, definitely. What you're looking at is you, well, would you agree that your your setup, your little studio is a sacred space and it's also uh, has a very symbolic purpose for you? Yeah, I agree with that totally. Nobody comes in here except for me. It's totally mm-hmm. locked away. It's at the back of the garden. My kids don't come in very rarely. No one comes in. It's just the space that I come and I do my stuff. And when I'm here, it does feel the centre of the world. It really does. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that that's a very powerful feeling, isn't it? Oh, it is. Yeah, absolutely. To be able to speak to people like yourself. And then an hour later, I've got some guy who's getting up at sort of like one o'clock in the morning to speak to me from Canada and then something else. And I do. I come here and I've never thought about this until you just said that. I do feel like it is where anything is possible. It's the Mm -hmm. home that dreams can occur and will occur. And so I like the thought that it looks exactly the same, the the sort of branding. And if you look at Join Up Dots, Join Up Dots, the logo is a world and the actual idea of it, not just with my coaching and with the platform, it's a case of joining up the dots and each one of us is a dot. And I like the idea of being able to build something that is such a global entity that literally we're all holding hands around the world supporting each other in in their dreams and I feel that this is the place this is the middle dot of everything what you've just said is so beautiful David I can almost feel like the choir of children singing behind me (laughs) go on you sing you sing I've already sung go on you joy what am I supposed to say? I mean, like, I can almost visualize the choir of children singing behind me, you know, like, um, it, to accompany what you've just said. It's such a, you, you painted such a beautiful picture, like, people all over the world, every dot is a person, and is joined because of your passion and because of join up dots, because of what you do. That's incredible. That's an incredible vision. I tell you, I, look, I'm going to tell you because I wasn't going to be speaking about this because we're going to be sort of relaunching it. But as I sort of mentioned earlier, we've got this coaching group called Dream Starters Academy. And I realized through doing it that the hardest thing that people have is actually getting started, actually believing in themselves. So what we're doing, we're creating this platform, which I'm developing at the moment, that we're going to get people into it and take them through a course to find their thing. And then we're going to work with them on actually building a business business within whatever environment they want to do and we've got people in there that are um, coaches we've got guitar teachers we've got a kitchen designer we've got uh, a musical artist we've got loads of different sort of people but what I want to do is get so many people in there that we can find all the musicians and group them into their own little dot and then all the coaches and put them into their own so you're not just being surrounded by people that 
are a sort of an eclectic mix you're actually finding your tribe within that and then we can then develop your skills even quicker because you're only dealing with people that have your passions your desires and i think that's going to be a really powerful way of of building momentum what do you think joy right that sounds very empowering and you're going to have so many people this is a it sounds like a very good strategy I think it's better than that, Joy. I think it's the best strategy that's ever come into my mind because it, keep, <laughs> it keeps on coming back to me. It keeps on coming back every single day. I can't shake it, so I know that I've got to push it out to the world. And is that another way that people need to sort of connect with themselves? When they're sitting on the bus, when they're at their work, what they end up thinking about to, to monitor those thoughts. And if they find that they're constantly thinking about travel or they're thinking about having children or they're thinking about whatever that is a good indication of where their life should be going not that it it may not go there but they should take the steps to actually get there yes for sure i i have experiences before like that where something just keeps coming back to you you just can't shake it off uh, it could be a picture something someone said it could even be a billboard you saw and the words just haunted you or a movie it could be anything and it just keeps coming back and you have no clue why there is no uh, reason for it to keep coming back to your mind um that's one of the uh that was actually how uh, for our children started because i saw a picture of these two uh, little girls, they were holding hand, they were naked, they were uh, on the street of Cambodia, they were very dirty, they had no shoe, they looked very hungry, and I told myself, there is something very wrong with this picture. And then for days and weeks, I was going crazy because this picture just refused to get out of my head, and I was desperate <laughs> to exercise this picture. And then I realized the only way was to do something. I didn't know what to do, so I just, you know, um, I was selling my modeling calendar then i'm like okay fine you know um this is what i have now so i'll use this and then one thing leads to another and before you know it i started a team for our children and then what turned out to be a two years project now i've decided no this is it this has become who i am i'm very comfortable with with it and it has changed me it has transformed me and this is this is to stay i'm going to do this for as long as i can so because of a picture david a picture that i just randomly saw on facebook yeah but i could argue the same thing i had a speech put in front of me that steve jobs said which we're going to play in a moment and that has changed my life as well it doesn't have to be you know choirs of angels does it it just has to be something that that makes you feel something and if you realize then that it's that's your mission that's your gift or whatever you you have to go forward with it don't you Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and I guarantee you, um, most of the time you have no clue what to do. Then just go with the first idea that makes somewhat sense to you. Just go with it. You don't need to see the whole flight of stairs. You just need to see the first one. When you're done, the next one will appear in front of you. So just to have that blind faith, but you know what? It works. Absolutely. And wake up every morning and go, don't stop me now. <laughs> I'm having such a good time. <laughs> That's the way to get going. Well, what we're going to do now, we're going to play the words that we've just been talking about. And these are the words that Steve Jobs said back in 2005. Hugely powerful. And I feel ready to listen to him again. Here he is, Steve Jobs. Of course, it was impossible to connect the dots looking forward when I was in college. But it was very, very clear looking backwards 10 years later. Again, you can't connect the dots looking forward. You can only connect them looking backwards. So you have to trust that the dots will somehow connect in your future. You have to trust in something, your gut, destiny, life, karma, whatever. Because believing that the dots will connect down the road will give you the confidence to follow your heart even when it leads you off the well-worn path. And that will make all the difference. They are good words, aren't they, Joy? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I can I can understand why you you would uh, play this every single time you know you, you just can't get tired of something like that. When you look back on your life and I love asking this question where where's the big dot that really has started pulling everything together? I think everyone in their life now that has achieved success has a dot where they can go yeah I think that was it. That that was the moment. What about yourself? I think my big dot would be the first dot <laughs> when I was, uh, you know, 15, 16, and I decided, hey, you know, I have to stop living like this. I have to do something, and then I went into bottling. So that is one giant thick dot for me, and I think 
my life changed from then forward. I mean, I can't, I dare not imagine without this big dot, where where would I be today? Did you have what a did you have a belief over that your real big dot is coming up? Because I do. I, I I can look back and go, yeah, that that was my big dot. That was when things started to move in the direction. But I now have this belief that no, I think actually that was just the little dot. The big dot is going to be somewhere in the future. I would like to believe that there is always bigger dots to come. Make it so, then, Joy. Make it. Don't just say, <laughs> I would like to believe. Just say to me, yes, David, bloody right. There's going to be huge, great, big dots all over the place. Go on. You, you you say it. I've given you the words. Okay. So I will have bigger dots to come. and Just like my name, Jay. Oh, why? Oh, make it a dot. Big dot. <laughs> Absolutely. That's a, that's a good branding, actually, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah, joy. Joy to the world and joy to all podcasters. That's what you brought to us. And that means that we are at the part of the show now that literally we will touch in on the joy that you've had in your life. This is a sermon on the mic when we send you back in time to have a one-on-one with your younger self. And if you could go back in time and speak to the young joy, what age would you choose and what advice would you give? Well, we're going to find out because I'm going to play the music and when it fades, you're up. This is the sermon on the mic. The best bit of the show The sermon on the mic The sermon on the mic This is for Joy at um, 15 years of age Dear Joy, I know that you're feeling hurt right now It has been many years now living with the confusion and the pain I also know how much you desire for things to change. I applaud you for the bravery that you demonstrated by working on your self-esteem because of that strength that you displayed. I am who I am today. For this, I thank you. I request that you also work on your self-compassion and love who you are above and beyond what you achieve for you must know that you are precious beyond measure. You possess some powerful instincts. That was why you could initiate and persist in healing yourself. And you succeeded beyond my wildest imagination. So I ask that you extend those instincts, especially towards people that you surround yourself with. Make sure that they are always in alignment with who you are and your values. Lastly, know that you can do no wrong. So for God's sake, Lighten up, so laugh a little more, dance a whole lot more, and know that it's all going to be okay. I promise. So go ahead, lighten up, and lean into your joy always. Joy, what's the number one best way that our audience can connect with you? Uh, my website, joyling.com, J O Y L E N G.com. And I know that you've got a free gift for all our listeners. Uh, Yes, I do. So I have a self-compassion seven days challenge. Um, You can go to my website, go to the right hand corner. There is this uh, column called free empowerment tools. Click on self-compassion seven days challenge. Brilliant. And I hope everyone takes the challenge and comes back and tells us how it's changed their life. Joy, thank you so much for spending time with us today, joining up those dots. Please come back again when you have more dots to join up, because I do believe that by joining up the dots and connecting our past is the best way to build our futures. Joy Lang, thank you so much. Thank you, David. Thank you for having me. So how many of you are scared at doing something? How many of you sit there thinking, oh, it's not going to work? You imagine that. She's shy, she's timid, but she starts becoming a model and a dancer and pushing herself out there, even though it was torturous. Every single day she hated doing it, but there was something in her that pushed her on. And that's what it's all about. You know, doing a show like this is very easy now, but at the beginning it wasn't. It was really, really difficult having the courage and the commitment to actually record and put it out 
out to the world it's scary time but believe me everything is on the other side of scary and if you haven't grasped that after nearly 600 episodes of join up dots then you never will if you need any help with anything please connect with us we're doing great stuff now we've got a whole platform that is rocking and rolling uh it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger and believe me it's a way that you can take your life to anywhere you want Love being on the show. Thank you so much for listening and we will speak to you again. Cheers. Bye-bye. David doesn't want you to become a faded version of the brilliant self you were once to become. So he's put together an amazing guide for you called the eight pieces of advice that every successful entrepreneur practices, including the two that changed his life. Head over to joinupdots.com to download this amazing guide for free and we'll see you tomorrow on Join Up Dots.